Okay, and finally, I would like to welcome Dr. Peggy Schwarz. Dr. Schwarz is a board certified dermatologist with associates in dermatology, also located in our Watertown location. Dr. Schwarz will be talking to us about acne this evening. Thank you for joining us this evening, Dr. Schwarz. Please tell us more about acne. Hi, Heidi. Thank you for having me. Can you hear me okay? Yes, thank you. Okay, well, thank you for everyone for joining. Um, yes, so today we're going to talk about acne. I'm sure we're all familiar with it, but I'd like to talk a little bit more about the, the specific types and the treatments that we can do. I find that acne is something that people, you know, can post about online or, you know, and sometimes the advice they get, I read it and I kind of cringe um, at the, at the you know, the lay advice that's out there. So just to talk about it a little bit more. I'm sure we're all familiar with the concept of acne, and it's a disorder of what we call the pilosebaceous unit, which means the little hair follicle and the little oil follicle that deposits into that hair. Um, and I'm sure most of us know already that acne tends to affect the younger population. You know, as we hit our, our teens and puberty, it tends to flare up, but it can continue in fact, 12% um, of women in their 40s and 3% of men in their 40s will continue to have acne. So it's not just a disorder of, of young people. Um, so as far as types of acne, there are a few different types of acne. I'll go through just a few of them. The first type is comedonal acne, which is more known as um, closed comedones or open comedones or blackheads or whiteheads. That type of acne, very common on the forehead, especially if you're using like a lot of um, a lot of oils on the hair. Sometimes it can come down and kind of clog the pores. Um, we have a lot of treatments for that. Um, some of them are over the counter. Some of them are prescription. And we like to tailor each acne patient to have their own regimen. So comedonal acne, usually topicals work fairly easy to treat, a nice outcome for most patients. Next, we'll talk about inflammatory acne. So that's the more traditional like pimples that we think of when we think of acne or pustules, like those pus filled uh, like whiteheads that come to the surface. So for inflammatory acne, it depends on how severe it is. Sometimes we can get away with just topical treatments, topical antibiotics and washes. But if it's more involved and it's deeper in the skin, then we do have to go to an oral antibiotic. Um, just to treat it systemically and really treat it from basically from the inside out. Um, there are other treatment options. We can also tailor the antibiotic, or if you don't want really to use an antibiotic, there are other things we can do. So that's basically inflammatory acne. There's also uh, hormonal acne, which affects women. And it's the acne that shows up in what we call the classic hormonal distribution, meaning like the beard distribution, where men would grow facial hair and have a beard, women can get acne. Um, in those cases, we can use hormonal treatments. Um, a medication called spironolactone is often helpful, or even just going on certain oral contraceptives can help um, kind of dampen that uh, hormonal response or that hormonal acne. The most severe type of acne is called nodulocystic, and that's when it's very, very deep in the skin, very painful just to touch it, it's very tender. That we definitely have to use oral treatment. Sometimes a, a antibiotic is not enough and we have to go to a treatment called isotretinoin or Accutane. Most people have heard of it, um, the branding Accutane. That involves monthly visits and uh, blood tests as well to monitor the liver, and that's more of a, for the more severe cases. So that's nodulocystic acne, and that's a very high risk of scarring. So we like to be aggressive and treat it so the scarring isn't, is minimized from what we can do. In addition to the active acne, we can also have changes from acne. You can have scarring. Um, there are many different types of scarring. We can try to treat it. Um, a little bit more difficult than the active acne, but there are several modalities we can use. And then even just what we call post-inflammatory hyperpigmentation. More common in people with darker skin types, but after you have an active pimple or an active lesion, sometimes the active the inflammation will go away, but you're left with a brown spot or a dark spot. And there are other things we can do. Um, topically or cosmetically to try to lessen that appearance. So we try to address the active acne and then the after effects of the acne as well. 
Great. Thank you for teaching us about acne, Dr. Schwartz. Um, if you have any questions about acne, please submit your questions in the comment section. Okay, and I did have one text come through. It says um, the person is asking, when does acne typically first appear? So typically first appears um, from the ages of like eight to 12. Like I said, when that puberty first starts and it tends to peak around the ages of like 16 through 18 and then it can kind of disappear into the 20s. But like I said, it can continue long, long after that. Okay, um, another question also came in. Um, the person is saying, I'm in my 50s, why am I still getting acne? So excellent question. So yes, you can get acne in your 50s um, or continue to have acne. It depends on the type of acne you have. Um, for women, sometimes the hormonal acne can continue well beyond, you know, in their 40s and 50s. The, um, the other thing we want to think about is perhaps maybe it's not acne, maybe it's rosacea. There are subtypes of or a subtype of rosacea that closely resembles acne and sometimes it's hard to tell apart. So that's why it's important to go to the dermatologist. 